Science Meets Art, Workshop on Biodiversity, Brella, Croatia, August 25th through 31st, 2014. Sponsored by Professor Dr. Ivan Dikic, MAP, Meeting Art Place, Brella. Initiated by AVO, Society for Out of Frame Education. Kunstkraftwerk Leipzig. The Kunstkraftwerk is a new cultural center in Leipzig, Germany, currently being converted from a defunct factory space, one of industrial production, into a space geared towards community enrichment. As a hybrid structure, our aim is to encourage open cultural engagement through complementary parallel programming. The building itself, built in 1863, served as a power station to supply energy to the tram system and streetlights in the Western District. When the municipality centralized the power stations, our craftwork became obsolete and in 1950 was converted into a heating station. The factory was finally shuttered in 1992 after the fall of the Berlin Wall. 150,000 Leipzigers fled to the West in the 10-year period after the reunification of Germany. Staggering unemployment as high as 19% and the loss of 90% of all jobs in the manufacturing industry, with housing vacancy as high as 22% in the year 2000, left many neighborhoods nearly empty, compromising the city's functionality. A power station was simply not needed in our district, and the factory has remained closed ever since. I like to imagine that the Heights Kraftwerk was in hibernation all those years, waiting for its new function to be discovered as the Kunstkraftwerk. The KKV measures over 1,000 square meters, and the surrounding outdoor space boasts another 2,000 square meters. We opened to the public in 2015, bringing together music, theater, dance, exhibitions, education, lectures, workshops, and conferences, open for both private and public events, emphasizing synergy between our users, presenters, and audience. The identity of the Kakave is not specifically predefined. Its purpose will expand as it functions as a communal space. The International Exhibition Program aims to redefine aesthetic experience as its architectural environment evokes a flexible, dynamic possibility. Since the space is essentially a medium unto itself, the exhibition program is focused on intervention, both visually and intellectually, revitalizing a critical dialectic which is global in scope, historically relevant, addressing the social and political, avoiding marginalization and rejecting the insular in ideology. We will be an active platform for divergent theoretical positions from which new insight and questions pertaining to the arts have the landscape to play and challenge one another. As an institution, we embrace cultural distinctions exceeding our borders while still participating in Leipzig's urban conversation. The values promoted by MAP in the Science Meets Art workshop echo our core principles. The artist's approach, building awareness through collaborative practice. Interdisciplinary practice, receptive and flexible thinking, the fostering and promotion of different perspectives and skills, and active participation in a wider cultural discourse is a necessity when facing the complex problems that challenge us as a society. The misconception that science and art are polar opposites is a short-sighted understanding of what creative thinking entails. This division hinders not only the discipline, but also the broadening of public awareness and civic engagement. An integrative approach between the sciences and art is of great value since biodiversity depletion, our main theme of this past week, occurs as a result of multiple factors and requires the involvement of all realms of society and government to produce the necessary changes in order to slow down and hopefully reverse this effect. Both scientific and artistic practitioners fluidly move between concept and experience, the subjective and objective, the tangible, quantifiable, and the ephemeral. Art is no longer solely about formal aesthetic values. The entire repertory of inherited forms has been challenged, dismantled, and replaced with a new motivation, one filled with social purpose and a multi-perspectival intelligence. Since the discourse is no longer an internal, isolated exercise in criticism among academicians, critics, the upper class, and artists, the range of artistic expression has widened and begun to encompass other subject matter, previously outside of the artist's purview. The dialogue has vastly expanded to include philosophy and ethics, politics and activism, 
anthropology and social intervention, humanitarian causes, economics, mathematics, technology, chemistry, physics, and finally biology, which brings us to our topic. Many people find that the topic of biodiversity depletion is an overwhelming and tragic inevitability that as a private person we have no influence or control over. The fear is simply too much to think about. In such times, the artist is of great importance to society, as the artist acts as a bridge between the spectator and the idea, creating a sense of belonging. Artist Franco Berardi once said, what interests us in the image is not its function as a representation of reality, but its dynamic potential, its capacity to elicit and construct projections, interactions, narrative frames, devices for constructing reality. At Science Meets Art, we explore this idea through various exercises, collaborative work, and the introduction of new techniques and mediums. We will present to the public a picture, so to speak, of the process and results of these exchanges on Saturday. In my work as a curator at the Kakave, when searching for new projects and building exhibitions, I find that artists that collaborate with experts from other fields produce some of the most powerful imagery as a result of their deepening understanding of their subject matter, adding a layer of authenticity to their exploration. In 2015, we will present two such artists, Ting Tong Chang, a UK-based Taiwanese artist, and Yuki Hirakawa, a Germany-based Japanese artist. Their collaborations with biologists and natural historians help them as artists to delve deeper into their material so that their public presentations have greater meaning and emotion while at the same time are informative, promoting ethical coexistence. Evasive species, climate change, habitat loss, overexploitation and pollution have profound negative impacts on biodiversity. According to research published in the journal Nature Climate Change May 2013, 50,000 globally widespread and common species were observed. It was concluded that due to global warming, more than one half of the plants and one third of the animals will lose more than half of their climatic range by 2080, which equates to massive population deterioration and extinction. This is within our children's lifetime and without considering the Fukushima disaster effects on the Pacific Ocean. The choices that we make now as people and as countries to mitigate climate change has the potential to reduce these losses by 60%. What does scientific research, facts and figures, mean to the average man? And what does it mean to the artist? Mark Dian. In 1992, artist Mark Dian in his work, The Report of the Department of Marine Animal Inventory of the City of New York Chinatown Division, made an exhaustive study survey of the various species of fish in the Chinatown fish markets, photographing, identifying, and cataloging them. Almost a decade later, many of the species Dion have, has collected have suffered from population declines, and some have even become commercially extinct, meaning that they are no longer available in market for human consumption. Mark Dian is known internationally for his artworks that grow out of scientific field work, incorporating elements of biology, archaeology, ethnology, and the history of science expressed through artistic installation. Ting Tong Chang. The latest work of Ting Tong Chang responds to Mark Dian's Chinatown project, and as Ting Tong is from Taiwan, it is both a personal and universal work. Ting Tong was born and raised in Taiwan, where he first began his artistic career in Taipei, before relocating to London to study at Goldsmiths. His work originally focused on social and political intervention in a very direct form of expression. His early work can almost be seen as political activism, capitalist criticism, through direct engagement with workers. Chang's tableau has since evolved away from this type of actionist work when he immigrated to the UK. When reflecting on his country, Chang states, I lived in a society of manufacture, exportation, the industrial area, intensive labor, commodities production, materiality. Ever since I moved to the UK, I found myself living in another machine, a society of consumers, importation, the financial center, the bankers, numbers, immateriality. 
The journey to the West is a travel from one machine to another. One machine produces products in pollution, and the other generates profit in crisis. Productivity matter is inherent within objects. To which degree an object is considered as useful and therefore productive, and to which degree it reaches its non-productive level and becomes garbage. In a society of production, the valuable and productive and the non-productive and waste are predefined. In his most recent series, beginning with Brassica Negra, Ting Tong Chang elaborates the interrelationship between consumption, industrial production, and ecosystem. Inviting the viewer to reflect upon the relationship to market and consumption, what they eat, and the process in which food goes through before it reaches their plate. The environmental consequences of mass production and post-industrialization are particularly relevant to Leipzig, as it's historically been a trade city and major industrial center in Europe. Since Leipzig is a landlocked city, fish farming is utilized on a large scale in the region, and freshwater fish from our lakes and rivers is vulnerable to industrial runoff. Ting Tong Chung's installation and performance at the Kakave will contribute to a vital dialogue that the EU on the whole must tackle. His first collaboration with science as pictured here involved working with Dutch biologist Professor Gerd Flick of the Raboud University in the Netherlands. The performance installation references her research in ecogenomics, which focuses on plants' defense response to natural environments. In the science faculty of Rabud University, Ting Chong Chong sealed himself in a greenhouse with hundreds of caterpillars and 30 black mustard plants. During the three-day performance, an ecosystem was formed with the inclusion of Ting Tong. The caterpillars were cooked and consumed by Chang out of hunger. His urine was gathered and distributed through a watering system providing nutrition to the plants. Finally, the plants were providing nourishment for the caterpillars. Meanwhile, Andrea Nunez Casal operated a research center. The subject of research was the electrical response of the plants when they were under attack, which was sampled and visualized. The printed images of these data were also exhibited. At the Kakave, Ting Tong will create a fishery ecosystem from which he will also be fed, however, for two weeks of performance. Titled, Whence Do You Know the Happiness of Fish? He will follow the same model in a different form. Again, working with a biologist, both in the Netherlands and locally, he will create a fish ecosystem. Ting Tong will act as a predator within this harmonious, self-contained ecosystem. The stock market exchange will act as an external factor, changing the temperature of the pool, the oxygen level, the movement of the water, based on the major fishing industry's daily market exchange. Ting Tong sees this piece as an opportunity to enter a type of sculptural environment. Yuki Hirakawa. Yuki works in a much different way from Ting Tong. Yuki creates videos, photographs, and installations which deal with the extraordinary quality that time presents to us by exploring the inherent stillness of a place or object. His works have a poetic silence to them which evokes a feeling of solemnity. In his black and white videos, phenomena such as petrification, Fire, snow, and rain suspend us in a sometimes eerie dreamscape. Most often shot from a single, unchanging perspective, he captures static, rigid scenes that resemble pure crystallizations of time's traces. Most of his recent work is based on investigative field work while in residence. Yuki passes through the environment with soft ties, seeing what is there and uniquely what is no longer there. His installations most often include materials from a specific site inspired by the surrounding in which he is working. Yuki is a conjurer of times past. The fixed viewpoint has a narrative characteristic from the first person perspective that brings the viewer face to face with the continuum of life and the fragility of existence. Currently, Yuki is presenting a new video installation at the Sapora Art Museum for which he photographed tree stumps in Makomanai Park in Sapporo last year. His photos recreate the negative space of the loss of the trees and the holes in the sky left by their absence. The installation recreates a vanished forest in the exhibition space by presenting multiple traces of this absence. Drawing attention to the contrast between 
untouched primeval forests in parks, man-made nature. Created in the course of urbanization, the work highlights the interrelation of city and nature in the history of Sapporo's development. Yuki's process of extraction and rearrangement creates a new purity, a temporal space in which we can enter and meditate. The measurement of time is intuitive, a natural gauge, which carries us through the work. In the Kakave, Yuki will exhibit a three-channel installation in response to the tragedy of Fukushima. He will take inspiration from the candle clock to show the continuous leaking of the nuclear reactor, poetically communicating the passing of time as an attempt to help us understand the magnitude of, of destruction. In conclusion, the artist's approach, as seen in the work of Mark Zian, Ting Tong Chang, and Yuki Hirakawa, is ever expanding. And the position of artists in society as, edu as educators is of utmost importance, blurring the line between disciplines, between science and art, in order to communicate with the world.